together. Uh, you know, going into game one, I feel like you know we're definitely ready. Even though we're gonna miss some bodies, but I think the guys that we're gonna have out there are more than ready uh, to, to get us off to a great start. How do you make up the losses of Bradley Beal and Martel Webster? Come in tomorrow. That'll make a great rest. Well, you got to do it collectively. You know, guys got to be ready to step up. You know, we brought in some new additions such as myself, uh, Dewan Blair, <coughs> Chris Humphreys, uh, Rasul Butler, another veteran. Uh, uh, who can knock down shots, play a couple positions. So it's got to be collective uh, from one another. Uh, and, you know, we got to make up, let's take up the slack that these guys have. There's no excuses. I mean, just because these guys out don't mean that we can't go down to Miami, we can't go down to Orlando and get the job done. So speaking of Rasul, uh, what do you think? Him you know, getting a 15 spot, what, what's your feelings on him sticking with the team and what he brings to you guys that you didn't have? You know, you know he, he's a guy, you always need shooting in this league. You know, just period. I mean, you know, when you lose a great shooter in Bradley Bill out for whoever knows how long, he's a veteran presence, he's great in the locker room, he gets his work done, uh, he has experience, you know, and I think those are the key things that help him make this team. Paul, when you got here, the guys were saying one of the things you were saying was protecting home court, and another thing was saying getting into the free throw line. Why was that one of the things that you wanted to kind of tell them and get, and get across? Well, those are important. You know, one, home court, yeah, you know how important that is because, you know, road wins are sometimes hard to come by in, in this league. So you got to be a dominant home team. If you want to get a high seed, get a home court advantage in the first round, the free throws. When you look at uh, the close games that are played on a daily basis, and you look at the playoff games that only uh, when teams only win by like one, two, or three points, then the first stat you look at is you know free throws. When you shoot ten for eighteen from the line, you look like you're like dang, we made three or four more free throws. So we have to be a great free shoot, free throw shooting team, especially with the shooters we got. Do you guys think you, that you were aggressive um, in the preseason game? The line at some points you got shot for thirty free throws, forty three throws. Is that a point of Line. We talk about it, you know, guys in the locker room, you know, <clears throat> we talk about it, you know, so uh, as long as we continue to do that, see what we do, need to do to get better, that's the key for this ball club. We're in that locker room, we're talking about, um, you know, stuff off the court, then we start talking about basketball, that's one of the things that come up. How come for real do you feel you have uh, picked up this offensive system and how much are you playing the four out there? Uh, I've, I've done a, uh, I've picked it up pretty quick, actually. Uh, I think, you know, once coach says it once, I'm able to pick it up. Today, I, I ran a lot of four more than I had in the past. So in the next week or so, I'm going to be playing, uh, uh, doing plays at the four so I can know that. You know, never know when it comes down. We need to put a small lineup, get good shooting down there. At the end of games, uh, I could be that guy. So I'm going to pick it up more and more. Got a few uh, m few minutes there at the four in the scrimmage today. So hopefully, as we continue to practice, I can get more and more acquainted to it. How, how was that transition to the four last season? For you. Oh, it's tough. You know, it's a different, it's a different monster. You know, I, I've been playing perimeter. I'm used to, uh, you know, different type of defense you play. Used to chasing guys. Used to, you know, going through pick and rolls. Now, as a big man, used to you can, you can fly in from rebounds from the perimeter. As a four man, you know, a lot of things is vertical, <laughs> and then you're playing against a lot of bigger and stronger players. So. Uh, and it's a different type of defense is being played because you're, you're sort of like the anchor when you're when you're guarding a big man and you have to do pick and roll defense and, and talk, talk, continuous talk. You know the bigs have to do all the screen and roll coverage. So it's definitely a transition than what I've been used to. Do you find it's tougher on the defensive end than the offense? Well, I, it's tough to say because those guys are big, they're strong, they bang constantly all game. You know I don't mind chasing around and going through screens as a perimeter because that's what I've done. Either or, first four or five. But as a guy, you have to be uh, big and strong and battle. So that kind of wears you down. I mean, it's give or take. I can't say the bigs work as hard as the guards or the guards work as hard as big. It's equal. What are your thoughts on the Eastern Conference this year? A lot of shakes, a lot of different moves being made, not just uh, you know, Cleveland, but a lot of teams throughout the conference. What do you think about the East as a whole? I think it's wide open. I think uh, there's no clear cut favorite. I mean, if you want to give the favorite to Chicago or Cleveland, that best based on who they have as players or, or, or the past, I mean, that's fine. But uh, I think it's wide open. I think we definitely have an opportunity to be right there at the top. All right,